Today's devotional is entitled Fans or Followers. <laughs> fans know all the important stats of their favorite people. Sports fans know all about their team stats and may even know some of the intimate details of their lives like their spouses or even favorite cars. People will even spend hours upon hours poring over data that pertains to their favorite team, player, or sport. They make it a point not to miss an opportunity to watch them play or even get to go to a game. And see, even people will do the same about actors and actresses. And sometimes people become fans of people because of how they treat other people or possibly even a personal interaction that they had with them where they treat you so very well that suddenly you become a fan for life. But see, there is a difference between being a fan and being a follower, though. And see, a fan is someone that will support a person for the most part. They may not always agree with everything that this person does, but will blindly support them for who they are for the most part. A follower is someone that is for the, almost always attracted to this person to a degree, that they're always in the know with what's going on with this person, that they're always watching this person doing whatever they're doing. And even if they don't always agree with everything that they're doing, they will be there first and foremost to follow them. See, a fan might be more engaged in what they say and do and be one of the first people to respond when the person says something, but a follower is someone who has chosen to hear what they have to say. A follower can be a fair weather person and be like a roller coaster. They'll have their highs and they'll have their lows in regards to how this person, team, or, or whatever might interact and stick with it. A fan is a person that's usually passionate about what this person or sports team is doing but their passion can fade and they will typically jump to somebody else that gives them that same high or rush. You see, a fan of Jesus, though, will admire and respect what Jesus says. A follower, though, will devote their lives and try to become more and more like Jesus and less like themselves. So right now, the, the question for each and every one of you guys is, are you a fan of Jesus or are you a follower of Jesus? You see, in John chapter 6, Jesus has amassed a crowd of about 5,000 while he's teaching. And Jesus' fame has reached far and wide and people want to come hear what Jesus says and even try to see him perform miracles. And we see in John chapter 6 verses 1 and 2, it says, After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee where the Sea of which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. You see, Jesus had a, self, a very large crowd of fans and followers, people that were excited to hear what Jesus had to say. And to be able to say that they were a part of this movement was something so very, very big, which is why they followed him. You see, Jesus recognized an opportunity to see who were his actual fans and followers and asked the disciples where they could get food to feed this enormous crowd. Jesus knew exactly what was going on, though, which is why he was testing his disciples. And see, in John chapter five, verses six, or uh, John chapter six, verses five through nine, I'm sorry. And says, lifting up his eyes then and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said this to test them, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread will not be enough to feed even, uh, each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew Simon's Peter, uh, Simon Peter's brother said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? See, the disciples recognized that the food available and even the money that they had was not going to be enough to feed this large crowd. But we see Jesus take these five loaves and these two fish and multiply it so that not only did everyone have more than enough to eat, the remaining filled 12 baskets. And the people seeing this are starting to get super excited. Suddenly, the people that were on the fence about who this Jesus fellow was were becoming fans. A man that will share good news and also feed us? It's like they won the lottery, so to speak. Suddenly, they're getting not only a meal, but they're also getting a, a good word that makes them feel good. 
But we continue on. We see by the, in the evening that Jesus and his disciples had gone back down to the sea, and Jesus tells them to get into the boat to go to the other side. Jesus does follow the disciples later, but not till much later into the night. And the next day, the crowd is looking for Jesus and do not see him. And seeing that the boat that the disciples brought was gone, they all gather in their boats and go across the sea to Capernaum to seek Jesus. And we see in John chapter 6, verses 25 through 27, the heart of the conversation. It says, what kind of crowd this group of people are? Are they fans or are they followers? And it says, when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, you're seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. You see, these people were following him because they got a free meal out of it. That they saw an opportunity to, to hear a good word, to make him feel good. But more importantly, they got a free meal. They didn't follow after Jesus because of the signs and miraculous things that he was doing. They followed him because he was supplying a need in their immediate life, which was food for their belly. See, these people had heard of all the amazing things that Jesus has been doing, but they wanted to hear him speak as fans. They were not followers. They were just simply fans. They were looking for a free meal with a good message. They were not willing to do what was needed to become a follower. Now, how many times have we been in these shoes when we jump ship on something that sounds like a great thing so that we can join in with others to celebrate only when things start to go south, we leave it as quickly as we've joined. See, Christianity is not something that you join when you're on the mountaintop and then abandon when you find yourself in the valley. Christianity is not a roller coaster. It's something that you, you live day in and day out. So once again, the question is going to be raised. Are you a fan or are you a follower of Christ? Are you willing to go through the moments in life where it seems like everything is against you? Do not abandon ship when things get too hard. Jesus told us to take up our cross daily and follow him. And this means putting down that phone when temptation rises. Not watching that favorite TV show that everyone is raving about and walking away from a conversation when things start to go south. You see in Luke chapter 9 verses 23 through 26, and he said to them all, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory, in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. It's important to be a fan of Jesus, but it is more important to be a follower of Jesus. Be a fan of your favorite sports team, but be a follower of Christ. Like Jesus said here, take up your cross daily and follow him. It doesn't mean take it up once a week. doesn't mean to take it up once a month. Daily, you deny yourself and follow Jesus. You do this, you're not going to be a fan. You're going to be a follower of Christ. That is the devotional for today. Fans or followers?